In this video I will show you a more efficient way to produce series parallel resonance. In my previous video I also showed this but it wasn't really efficient. The series connected capacitor wasn't really discharged. It was very fast connected and disconnected but the charge in the capacitor didn't really discharge in the, into the resonant coil. And now it does. In my previous setup I had a lot of parts to make it happen. I had my phase shift uh, chip and I used two MOSFETs and both were switched with a gate drive transformer. A lot of work and it wasn't really efficient. The capacitor didn't really discharge but it showed the principle of series parallel resonance. Now I only use one MOSFET. I used an N MOSFET with a gate drive transformer again, the same as the previous setup. I also noticed the MOSFET doesn't get really hot. When I turn up the amps, then I ex expected it to become warm, but it really didn't. Just lukewarm, much less than I usually had it working. So it's a proper way to do it, I guess. So now we've got a higher resonant voltage rise for a less power consumed. This is the basic schematic. I've got a 50% duty cycle uh, square wave generator that's feeding the XC604 gate driver with a signal. It has a separate power supply. The output of the gate driver goes through a 3.3 ohms and 0.47 microfarad capacitor. All the capacitors that I'm using are polypropylene because they are capable of dealing with these uh, high frequencies. Then the signal goes through the uh, primary of the gate drive transformer to ground. The gate drive transformer also is capable of dealing with these high frequencies. And then the secondary is connected to the gate via a 5 ohms resistor and a uh, ultrafast 4007 diode that's uh, making it possible to switch really fast and the other side is connected to the source of the MOSFET. The MOSFET is an NMS MOSFET STF6N60M2. It has very low mm, uh, capacitance so it's able to switch rather fast around 1 ohms resistance and this is my power supply that's uh, being measured by the multimeters. When the MOSFET is turned on by the MER 460 ultrafast diode, the L1 coil gets pulsed. It builds up a magnetic field. And the magnetic field, when the MOSFET closes again, is producing a negative inductive spike. This is called high side switching because the high side of the coil is being switched by the MOSFET. And the negative inductive spike is going into the resonant system. C1 and C2 are 10 nanofarads, again polypropylene capacitors. And here's L2, my bifiler, 1.1 ohm, 0.3 millihenries resonant bifiler Tesla coil. And it's not grounded on a negative power supply, but it's grounded on the positive power supply and I'm using the outside rim of the coil for that. This is the bifiler coil. This is my outside rim connection so it's the outside rim and this is the inside rim. When you look at the patterns of Tesla you can also see that he's always grounding the outside of the pancake coils. When the MOSFET is switched off we get the negative inductive spike that charges, charges the capacitors in the system, especially the C1. And when the MOSFET is turned on again, and it's conducting it again, it's closing this circuit. And this provides the resonance, the series parallel resonance. And another thing in this setup that I'm showing you all, uh, the magnetic field of L1 is only used 
to produce the negative inductive spike to produce resonance in the series parallel system. So this magnetic field is totally uh, not used for any work. We could also couple L1 and L2 by stacking the coils on top of each other and in this way the magnetic field will also have a interaction with the resonant coil. I'm working uh, on a newer concept of this whole series parallel switching that's a little bit different than this. That will be in my next video. This is my setup. Um, I've got my function generator with a square wave 50% duty cycle at uh, 46,260 hertz or 46 kilohertz. The pulsed coil is now two coils stacked on each other because I had them and I thought I I'd increase the inductance. The inductance is now 1.58 millihenries and the coil is two ohms and they are series connected. When the coil is turning off the magnetic field produces an inductive spike. This inductive spike is then captured via a capacitor into the resonant coil that is grounded on the positive of the power supply. So the coil is now resonant. It's producing 400 volts peak to peak and it's at uh, 46.26 kilohertz with 368.5 milliamperes and a voltage of 7.42 DC that is consumed from the power supply that is pulsing this coil. So this is only working from the inductive negative voltage spike. I'll now show you the resonance sign on the oscilloscope. And here we have the resonant sign. You can see a little bump on the low side. This is where the inductive spike is added to the resonant sign and a little glitch on the top. I will make it a little bigger by detuning. You see here, there is a positive addition of voltage uh, from where the MOSFET is switching. I'll show the square wave now. Here's the square wave. I'll uh, tune it back into resonance. The MOSFET turns on here. So here's the discharge starting. And here is the MOSFET turning off. And that's where the magnetic field of the first coil is collapsing and producing an inductive negative voltage spike that is added to the resonance system. And this makes the coil resonant in series parallel mode. Thank you for watching and thank you for donating. I received uh, money from uh, a lot of viewers and I'm really happy with it. I have invested in new multimeters and other things are ordered. So thank you for donating. If you want to donate, uh, look at the link below. Uh, it's much appreciated. This research is always open source for the world to benefit from. And thank you for subscribing. I gained a lot of new uh, subscribers and I'm really happy with it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.